Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. <clears throat> well, if you look at some of the comments on uh, one of my FT8 uh, videos, one of the fellas wanted a little introduction to how do you actually connect the radio up. So, uh, I do own what's called a signal link. Let me kind of give you a good shot of that. Signal link. All right. You can see it's got a transmit knob, a receive knob, and a delay knob. Okay. And uh, as you notice, uh, I pulled this out of a drawer. Uh, both of the transmit and receive knobs are turned up about halfway. The delay knob is all the way counterclockwise. I never fooled with delay at all. You can read about that in the lit literature. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, don't fool with that knob at all. I do fool with the transmit level and the receive level knobs. Uh, on the device. Now, uh, let me kind of get you on my smiling face for a minute. Let me get you up here. And oh, I need a little bit more altitude there. All right. Uh, now, uh, this is not the only device you can use. There's several other brands out there. One of the other popular ones is called a Rig Blaster. Rig Blaster. Now you don't have to remember these. I'll put links to Signal Link and to Rig Blaster in the comments below. But anyway, you're going to need one of these devices uh, in order to connect up your radio to your computer. There's two cables. One of them is simply a USB cable. <clears throat> it does come with it uh, when you buy it, but you know, I've probably got 14 USB cables laying around. It's a regular USB cable, and uh, <clears throat> that goes in where it says USB there. All right. On the other side is the radio cable. Now here's the radio cable that I have especially for the ICOM 7000 right there. So this plugs into the port in the back of the uh, ICOM uh, designated for data and this jack plugs in to uh, where it says radio radio on the back of the signal link. I've never owned a rig blaster so I really can't tell you what connections it has in the back but I bet you money it's very similar to this. Okay and uh, I normally set again my receive and my transmit about halfway up. About halfway up. And then I adjust from there. Now, how do I adjust? Well, uh, in my case, I'm using that flex radio, so I'm adjusting it to where I get no higher than minus 1 dB. In other words, the transmission signal volume never exceeds minus 1 dB. Uh, in the case of a regular radio, you're going to have to either turn off the ALC or adjust the volume so you get no more than one or two lines at the most of ALC. Probably one would be better. So you don't want any or very tiny amount of ALC uh, <coughs> and or AGC registering on the meter that's on your radio. So you're going to adjust uh, either the gain on your radio or these knobs so that that ALC or automatic gain control, AGC, uh, doesn't really do anything. You don't want any of that. It'll clip the signal. 
So uh, <clears throat> that's the main thing. If you've got a switch that you can turn off on your radio where you can just disable that, I would go with that, okay, on a regular radio. Uh, it's very simple to connect. Again, just two cables. The USB connects up to the computer, and the special cable that you buy for your particular radio connects up to the radio and to the box. And then uh, <coughs> your signal will actually go into the computer, and you'll be able to decode uh, uh, using the software that you download, uh, FLDG or uh, JT65HF or uh, WSJTX. You'll be able to run all that software, whichever your preference is, and uh, get the signal into the computer and out of the computer back into the radio using a, I call it a sound card in a box. That's basically what it is. Sound card in a box. That's what that is. Now, let me kind of take you back to the screen because I want to show you some Windows uh, volume connections that you need to look at. Uh, again, I'm running Windows 10, but uh, 7 is going to be almost the exact same thing. Be very similar. And let me show you how you adjust the volume on the computer. Now remember, you adjust it here, but you, you initially need to adjust it on the computer. So let's uh, get you over to the screen. And here we go. And on a Windows computer, you got a little sound card, uh, sound uh, speaker uh, icon down on the bottom. You want to right click that right click it and go ahead and start by cho choosing playback. You're going to adjust the volume on the playback device and on the recording device. Let's do playback first. So we'll click that and we'll get a little box up here. <clears throat> now you're going to have to know what uh, the two devices are that connect up to your computer, uh, to your radio and to the computer. In my case, it's line one and line two. All right, so let's, uh, let's click uh, line one, and we get another box. And up at the top, you'll see uh, levels. Now, let me back you up again. Remember, I double-click this, and I got another box. There's another way to do it. You can right-click it and choose properties and you're going to get the same box okay <laughs> anyway it's a little easier just to double click it and the box will come up up here in the top you'll see levels so you can see in my case I have it set to 0, 0.0 dB that means the computer will not overdrive the signal. In other words, it's, it's, there's no gain, uh, zero gain dB being applied to the uh, audio signal uh, once I set this for 0, 0.0 dB. Now, <clears throat> that's how I set that. So 0, 0.0 dB. Under advanced, uh, you know, I have it set to whatever my radio supports or my sound card supports. Uh, and you can see in my case, I've got 9,600 hertz, 96,000 hertz. And uh, studio quality, it will work just as well at DVD quality or some of the other qualities, uh, you know. The signal is not an orchestra, so uh, with uh, every frequency known to man, it's a very narrow bandwidth so, of audio signals, so it's kind of not important. Just accept what you're given, okay? I really have never adjusted this uh, to any other setting. Uh, just leave it alone.
spatial sound, if you have that option, none. You don't want any, you don't want the computer doing anything to the audio to make it sound better. Okay, so none. So, and I say okay, and then I let's drop down to the uh, line input two. And we got the same screen again. Let's look at the levels again. And again, you can see I've got it set to 0, 0.0 dB. So, in other words, let me get you out of here. Say okay and okay. And get you back over here. So, basically, you set the computer up for no gain to the audio stream. And uh, there is a selection there for percentage or for dB. I'd encourage you to do the dB setting rather than the percentage uh, of gain. You know, I, it'd be better to do the dB. So select that and set it that way. And then do your adjustments on here. If you need more receive gain, uh, in other words, you've got a blue screen totally on the waterfall and none of the signals, uh, you can barely see them all. Try turning up the receive here and see if you just start getting some little uh, dots across the screen where it's uh, kind of becoming a little tiny bit yellow. Uh, but the signals are still there, and you can see si still see them. You don't want to wipe out the signal and turn it all yellow. <clears throat> That's you got too much received gain there. So turn it down, and when you just start getting a little few speckles around of yellow along with the signal, just leave it right there. You'll be fine. Uh, likewise, you can adjust the transmit gain so that your radio uh, is showing no ALC or AGC gain, <clears throat> just straight audio, and you're not tripping those and uh, having them basically adjust the volume or clip the signal uh, when you go to transmit. So that's about all there is to it. It's, it's, not, it's a little bit of experimentation you know, you got to get the software up and running and make sure you're connected and make sure you've got the two correct devices selected uh, for input and output uh, based on your particular computer setup. Uh, I can't really tell you what to select. Uh, most every computer is different, uh, so a little different, so can't really advise you there. <clears throat> I can tell you how to experiment and get at least one of them right. Uh, for receiving, you can just go down the whatever list is generated there and start selecting them. And then all of a sudden, you'll start seeing signals on the waterfall in the software. Well, that's the correct, uh, you've stumbled across the correct, uh, receive setting. So leave that alone and just concentrate on the output setting and uh, get that push to talk to work. So the, to get the signal in is, is kind of uh, even if you didn't know what you were doing you could just start selecting them and uh, one of them is going to generate a signal onto the waterfall in the software. That's the correct one. But for push to talk, it might take a little bit more experimentation uh, to figure out what COM port you're on and that kind of thing. Of course, you can always look in Device Manager, Device Manager in Windows, to determine what the sound card uh, COM link is. It'll report it there in Device Manager. How do you find device manager? Well, Windows 10, let me get you over there. You just come on down here and type device 
And uh, there you go. You got device manager right there. That's how you do it in Windows 10. And you'll get a screen. And down here where it says ports, you expand that box and it shows you your current ports and their COM port designation. So this will help you select the correct COM port. Of course, you've got to have all this hooked up <clears throat> so that they're showing in this list. I don't actually have it hooked up right now. Uh, but that's how you do it. You go to the device manager, go to ports, look in here and find the COM port uh, that matches the uh, device that you're using, whether it's a rig blaster or a signal lamp. <clears throat> All right, so with that said, I don't really know uh, anything else I can do for you other than have you experiment, but you're going to have to get yourself a sound card in a box. That's your first step. I don't have any preference. Uh, I've actually never used a rig blaster. Maybe somebody will jump in the comments and make some comments on the rig blaster. I've always used a signal link. And again, I'll put uh, links to both of these devices. Uh, they're not very expensive. I think I paid $89 for this or something. Brand new. And they do come for sale from time to time on QTH.com used. I've seen them cheaper than that, like $50. But anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Maybe that'll help out some of you uh, getting hooked up with FT8 or with JT65 or one of the other digital modes. That's your first step to getting hooked up. You've got to get a sound card and connect that radio to the computer. If you're lucky like me, I've got a Flex, and outside I have an ICOM 7200. They have a USB port in the back. So, and in this case, it has a fire wire connection in the back. So they don't need this device at all. Uh, in the case of the ICOM 7200, I just plug a normal USB cable in the computer and into the back of the radio and I'm ready to go. Uh, in the case of this, I just turn it on, select uh, uh, the correct selections in the software to turn on the virtual audio cable, that's what it's called, and I've got all my settings set up and don't need this device, it just runs it. So with that said, I wish you clear skies in 73. Hope I helped you. Everybody be good. Keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. See you all later. Everybody be good.